dividend yield. Equity, as we all know, is a source of funding. Ownership of equity in a business is in the form of shares. So when one says that he's an equity holder of a business, it means that the person holds shares, bought shares in the business. Okay. The shares has a price. So for somebody to own the shares, he must be willing to pay an amount for that to happen. So when a business says that their share price is $1, if an individual or an entity wants to be holders of that share, let's say they want 1000 of that, they will end up paying $1,000. That is the thousand quantity of the shares they want to hold by the price of the share. The return to equity holders, what they will expect for their investment is what we call the dividend. Now, this dividend will also be paid per share. In our earlier example, the individual, let's say a lady who owns a thousand shares, if the business declares dividend of let's say 50 cents per share, the lady will end up having a dividend of $500. That is a thousand shares by the dividend quotation per share. So when we talk about dividend yield, we are looking at the relationship between the amount an investor put in and the return it is getting. The price of the share with the dividend that is coming out. And also look at the percentage of the share's price that is being paid out as dividend. So if I bought the share for $1 and I'm getting 50 cents, it means that 50% of the share's price is coming back to me as dividend. The importance of dividend yield is that investors can decide whether this business is what I want to put my money into or not. If the yield is within my acceptability level, they go into it. If something that it doesn't augur well for them, either sell their shares or look for elsewhere for their investment. Also, it is a yardstick for management. So if you are going in for an investor who has high taste for yield and you will not be able to produce that, it just arms you for you to make an informed decision. Let's look at challenges relating to the dividend yield. The first is that if one stagnates on dividend yield, it can affect growth. This is true because the profit for the year, which in every sense belongs to the owners, normally a portion of it is paid out as dividend. Then the rest, which we term as retained earnings, is kept for further investment. So if a business pays out a higher dividend yield, it means that a higher proportion out of the profit for the year is being paid out, meaning a lower amount is left to further the purpose of the business. So once a dividend yield goes up, the opportunity for growth of a business comes down. It is not cast in stone. It might be that the business doesn't have any opportunity to focus on in a particular year or doesn't have any business activity planned. So it just pays out a higher amount. Or it might be certain decisions that has arrived that the business might not have been paying dividend in some years past. So they decide to make up for the current year. Second, that this dividend yield might mean different to different investors. What might be considered higher yield for one industry, let's say the food, might be low for a business with a higher risk. And lastly, because the yield involves the share price of the business, the price keeps fluctuating up in one month, down in another. So if you imagine two entities, you calculate the yield for one, let's say around the first quarter, you calculate the other around the third quarter you will not be having a meaningful comparison just because the prices will differ. So if one has a yield higher than the other, it is not because of any particular performance of the management. Okay, so when you make such analysis, it will be flawed. The formula for dividend yield is dividend per share divided by the share price multiplied by 100. So when we talk about dividend per share, we are looking at the total dividend declared by the business divided by the total number of shares existing. The total dividend can be found in the financial statement of the business. If you want to find the total number of shares, if you have access to the registration document, that will be easier. Other than that, when you visit the equity section of the statement of financial position or the balance sheet, the ordinary share column, ideally, they will state how much each share costs. You find the value just by its right, then you divide. Also, the share price is the current market price of the shares, which will be made available. If it is publicly traded, it will be found on the stock exchange or on the internet. Okay. When you find the metrics or the dividend yield and you compare to an industry standard, your prior year or a chosen competitor, 
and it is higher. It means that the business declared a higher dividend for the year. So I keep using declared because it is the management of the business that will determine how much dividend they are paying. I mean, in consultation with the board, this declaration will tie into the amount of profit they have. So it means that the business was efficient in that particular year, generating higher profit. Once the numerator, which is the dividend, goes up, the final figure will also increase. It can also mean that the dividend did not increase, neither did it reduce, but the share price went down. Once the denominator also goes down, the outcome will also increase. Now, this has the potential of stifling growth, as mentioned earlier. Once you pay a huge chunk of your profits for the year to your shareholders, you have a smaller amount to reinvest. And in situations where you want to invest, you have to go borrow. Once you go borrow, it will be more expensive than if you had reserved that amount and invested because it's your own money. It doesn't come at any cost. On the other hand, when you compare and it is low, it means that the dividend for that particular reduced. It can be management decision. The profit was okay, but they decided to reduce the profit for that particular period or the profit level affected that decision. It can also be that the price of the share increased. Once the denominator is increasing, the yield result will also what reduce. Then it has more opportunity for growth. If the profit is not affected, the profit is okay and the business pays out less dividend. It means that it has more funds to invest or take up opportunities that will come their way. Okay. Now this analysis must be based on further deliberations in the financial statement and other documents to come up with that. So we are giving you likely scenarios that will account for its outcomes. Okay. Let's test our understanding. So Edis Limited has its shares trading at $55. The company has consistently made quarterly dividend payments of $0.50 cents per share. Now, the dividend yield for the previous year was 2%. So we have to calculate the dividend yield of the company and interpret. For solution, we will restate the formula. That is the dividend per share divided by the share price multiplied by 100. When we do that, we will get a dividend yield of 3.64%, higher than that of the previous year of 2 means that there has been an increase. We got this 3.64% by dividing the dividend per share of $2 by the share price of $55 multiplied by 100. Okay. The annual dividend of 2, we got that by multiplying the quarterly payment of 0.5 or 50 cents by 4 because the 0.5 was evenly paid for the share price was quoted for annual. How does that come with that? When we analyze this, we can see that the business declared a higher dividend in certain situations went further to pay than its previous year. This can be as a result of a higher profit achieved in this year compared to last year or a reduction in the share price in relation to the last year where the profit level hanging around the same region. This also has a tendency of stagnating growth just in comparison to the previous year.